The following broadcast is brought to you by the friends and partners of Revival Ministries International. Like Pastor Rodney says, it is God that gives us the power to create wealth, but we have to follow His plan. Amen. Now, we, we all know Deuteronomy 28, right? You should be reading this over yourself and your family on a regular basis, if not every day. You listen diligently to the voice of the Lord your God, being watchful to do all His commands, which I command you this day. The Lord will set you on high above all the nations of the earth. All these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. If you heed the voice of the Lord your God, you should know this with a heart. Hallelujah. Blessed shall you be in the city. Blessed shall you be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body, the fruit of your ground, the fruit of your beast, the increase of your cattle, the young of your flock. Blessed shall be your basket and your kneading trough. Blessed shall you be when you come in and blessed shall you be when you go out. The Lord shall cause your enemies to rise up against you to be defeated before your face. They shall come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. And the Lord shall command the blessing upon you in your storehouse and in all that you undertake. And he will bless you in the land which the Lord your God gives you. The Lord will establish you as a people holy to himself as he has sworn to you. If you keep his commandments, keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways. And all people of the earth shall see that you are called by the name and in the presence of the Lord and they shall be afraid of you. And the Lord shall make you have a surplus of prosperity through the fruit of your body, your livestock, your ground and the land which the Lord swore to your fathers to give you. And the Lord shall open to you his good treasury, the heavens, to give rain of your land in its season and to bless all the work of your hands. And you shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. And the Lord shall make you the head and not the tail. And you shall be above only, and you shall not be beneath. If you heed the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you this day, and are watchful to do them, and you shall not turn aside from any of the words which I command you this day, to the right hand or to the left, to go after other gods, to serve them. So this is available for anybody, and yet at the same time, it's only available for a few. See, God makes it available to everybody, but there's only a few who grab a hold of this because there's a condition with it. Everything that God promises has a condition attached to it. And so we need to find out what that condition is, and we need to make sure that we fulfill the condition. Now, you know, the thing about covenant is that we don't understand covenant in this day and hour. I mean, people sign contracts and they violate them. In the old days, you could just do it on a handshake, and people would trust your word. But now people are such liars, and liars, the Bible says that liars will go to hell, amen, they won't go to heaven. And people break their word all the time. They violate these, con these contracts. But you have to understand what a covenant was in those days. A covenant meant that you commit to me and I commit to you. It's an un it's, it was called a blood covenant because if you broke it, you died. Your own family would kill you if you broke it. Because... If one person breaks it, everybody breaks it, and the whole of society falls down, right? So in the days in Africa when they would make these blood covenants, tribes would make covenants with tribes, and God made a blood covenant with us. And what happened with a blood covenant is that you make this commitment, lifelong commitment to each other that you will never violate this, that you will stick up for each other, you will protect one another, you will even die for one another. And at the same time, there were gifts exchanged which represented that everything that's mine is yours and yours is mine. So I can come to you and say, I see this that you have and I need it and, and ca I, I would like to have it. And you have to say, here it is, it's yours. Amen? And you can come to me and say, I see you have this thing I needed and, and would you please give it to me and I need to give it to you. Well, that is our covenant with the Lord, that he comes to us and he says, you have something that I need and I want you to give it to me. But at the same time, we have the right to turn around and say to the Lord, Lord, you have something I need, and I'm asking you to give it to me. Amen. The thing about a covenant is it has to be fulfilled on both sides. The thing about the covenants that God has made with man in the Old Testament, they would keep breaking it. God has never, ever, 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 ever been through all of eternity ever broken a covenant or, or, or been unfaithful to his word. 
And so he, what he did was he sent Jesus so that our salvation and our blood covenant could be eternally secure. Hallelujah. It's unbreakable, inviolable. And so we can, you know, this is the great thing about it. Okay, so our salvation is secure. If we believe and we've received Jesus, we washed in the blood of Jesus, you're going to heaven. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, there's still other commitments and things that we have to fulfill on our part towards the Lord. There's many, and I don't have time to get into all of them, but I'm going to speak today about, about on the financial side, because that is one way that we fulfill our covenant promises to the Lord. And that's why tithing was never done away with, ever. There's no scripture. If you can show me the scripture where it was done away with, we'll tell everybody it's done away with. There is no scripture. Jesus spoke about tithing. Tithing is, tithing is mentioned in the, uh, in the epistles. Melchizedek, Jesus is a type of, of Melchizedek, I should say, was a type of Jesus. And so really what that's telling us is that as Abraham brought his tithe to Melchizedek, we bring our tithe to Jesus himself. Amen. So when you put in your tithe, whichever way that you give it, online, with a check, with however that you do it, in your heart, you're not giving it to man, you're not giving it to an organization. You are giving it to Jesus, and Jesus sees your heart, and He knows. Amen. Hallelujah. And so that's a given. We don't pray about tithing. We, we just tithe. That's what we do. The moment any income comes in from whatever source that it comes in from, we tithe. Our giving, the giving is, is completely up to us, and the Lord um, gives us that option. And of course, we can pray and ask Him, because the Lord knows what we need, and He knows what He wants to give us, and He knows what's waiting for us, and He knows what He has planned for us, and He also knows what the key is and the seed that will unlock that blessing in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. And so sometimes the Lord will ask you to give something, because He has a he will ask you to sow a seed because He has a harvest in mind for you. Amen. I mean, there's times that we, there's a particular harvest that we want, that we need, that we're praying for. And so we take our money and we sow a seed and we bless uh, someone or we, or we sow it into the gospel. We sow it and we make sure it's good ground. We sow obediently to the Lord. We give. And then we attach our faith to that and say, Lord, I'm, I've given. And your word says, if I give, you'll bless me. You'll meet my need. Give it. It shall be given to you. Good measure. Press down. Shake it together. Running over. Well, men give to your bosom. Hallelujah. And so men give to men, it seems like. But really in the spirit, we're giving to the Lord. And in the spirit, he's giving to us. So if somebody comes in and gives money to us, we say, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Because God spoke to them to do it, and God speaks to us to bless others. Amen. And so it's all part of, of our covenant. Now, in, in chapter 29, it, verse 9, it says, Therefore keep the words of this covenant and do them, that you may deal wisely and prosper in everything that you do. It's such a key. People don't obey God's word, and then they get grumpy with God because they are not blessed like they see other people blessed and hear other people testifying, but they are not fulfilling and keeping their part of the covenant that they have with the God. See, this has nothing to do with anybody else. Don't let anybody else get in the middle of your relationship, your covenant with, with Almighty God. It's got nothing to do with anybody else. It's you and Him and your heart. And I don't know what your alabaster box is, you know what it is. I don't know what a sacrificial offering is for you. I know what it is for me. Amen. I know, I know, what, I'm, I, I know what my heart is attached to. The Bible says wherever your treasure is, that's where your heart is going to be. So I know what my heart is attached to. I don't know what your heart is attached to. I know when the Lord tells me to give something that means a lot to me, I know that God's going to give me something that's going to mean a lot to me. Hallelujah. And so, you know, we, as we grow in the Lord and as we give and as we see Him faithful, it, it's, it's not, it it's becomes easier to give. Amen. And there's still those things, those patches you'll hit where it's like, really? You want me to do that? But I did this last week and you want me to do this? But it's only because He has this awesome harvest standing by waiting for you, exceeding abundantly, blow your brain. I mean... How, I mean, you hear every Sunday, you hear all these testimonies and things that the Lord does for them. I mean, it's absolutely incredible. That, I mean, people getting given cars, houses, oh my word, all kinds of things. You know, millions of dollars to fulfill a dream. But you don't see the faithfulness. 
You don't see the working. You don't see this, the, the, the praying and speaking God's word. Amen. And you know what? And it doesn't really have anything to do with anybody else because it's really it's between them and God. It's between you and God. God knows and he sees and that's the only thing that matters. So, he's, so the Lord says, look, you, you need to keep this covenant. Do it so you may deal wisely and prosper. So we, the wisdom comes from the word of God. Amen. If you want to know how to prosper, you've got to follow God's word. Not people, not, 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 you know, there's a lot of people out there with a lot of opinions on how you should handle your finances. But if it's not lined up with the word of God, disregard it. Disregard it. Because you, you are tapping into a realm they have no concept of. Worldly people, all they have is what they see in front of them. But there's a kingdom that we cannot see that has all the provision that we need, that it is an unlimited supply. You know, the Lord showed me that with that scripture that talks about how Jesus fills the whole universe from the bottom to the top. And God showed me th that he has an unlimited supply and I needed to take the limitations off of my own thinking and seeing and believing. And I need, to, I need to look up and see the universe and see he fills it. And he has an unlimited supply. And whatever I need, he's going to supply it. You know, there's a scripture in the Old Testament that talks about God doing unusual work, acts. He's going to work his works and do unusual acts. Which means that God is going to show up from a direction you don't expect. Hallelujah. So don't put him in a box. And, and decide this is where it's coming from. Let, let it be unlimited. Let it be from, let, Lord, you fill the whole universe. I don't know where in the universe it's coming from, but I know it's coming to me because you're going to make sure that it gets to me because I'm working your word. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you get excited about that today? He has an unlimited supply. And therefore, whatever you need, he is unlimited. You stop being limited. Stop limiting yourself. Start thinking unlimited and start expecting unlimited. Amen. And start expecting it to come from wherever God wants to bring it from. Hallelujah. Let him surprise you. How many of you love being surprised? Oh, yeah. God is full of good surprises. <laughs> Amen. I love that he says here in verse 10, he says, All of you stand today before the Lord your God, your heads, your tribes, your elders, your officers, even all the men of Israel, your little ones, your wives, and the stranger and sojourn in your camp, from the hewer of your wood to the drawer of your water. So that means from the very top, from all of the chief of all of the people, all the men, down to all the ladies, to the children, to your servants. He said, everybody that lives in your house, in your camp, in your community, in your town, in your city, everyone is privileged to enjoy this covenant with me. Isn't that wonderful? Everybody's included. The children are included. We, that's why we teach our children. We, te we raise them in, in, the, in the anointing and in the, in the being born again and the Holy Spirit and giving and sowing. And we watched our kids from young give and sow and watch the Lord bless them. And they have incredible faith. I mean, some of our pastor's kids, we want to go on a, a <laughs> little Madison Hawes. I want to go on a Disney cruise. And her parents said, well, it's not in our budget. They didn't say we can't afford it. They said it's not in our budget, but if you put your faith out, that kid put her faith out. They were given 8,000 bucks to go on a Disney cruise. And how old was she? She was like six years, five or six years old. Hey, we need to have the faith of a little kid. Amen. That you may enter into the covenant of the Lord your God, into his oath with, which he makes with you this day, that he may establish you as this day as a people for himself. You belong to him. And his mark on your life is blessing. It is, pro is, it is protection. It is favor. What does the Bible say? That they will be afraid of you. They will look at you and go, how are you doing that? They won't understand how you're so favored and how you're so blessed and how you're so happy and how you're so increased and how you're so healthy and how your prayers are answered. They can't understand it, but it's your covenant God. Hallelujah. That he may be a God to you. Oh, he wants to show himself up big in your life if you'll just give him that opportunity. Amen. Don't let the devil lie to you. 
Don't be so small-minded and stingy and mingy and grumpy. Open your heart, open your hand, give, bless, worship Him, and let Him have an opportunity. Give Him an opportunity. He, he so wants an opportunity. He is, his eyes are wandering over the earth looking for someone in whose behalf He can show Himself up strong. He's looking for someone to bless. He's looking for someone to protect. He's looking for someone to, to pick up. He's looking for someone that he can be in covenant with and pour all of his, he's got so much love, he's got so much blessing, he's got so much everything good, and he's just looking to pour it out on somebody who will just believe him. Amen. Hallelujah. Isn't that awesome? That's so awesome. As he swore to your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I love this. It says, it's not with you only that I make this sworn covenant, but it's with the future Israelites who don't stand here before us, before the Lord today, as well as with those who are with us this day. Guess who that is? That's you. That's you. That's anybody that chooses to be in covenant with God. Because this covenant that was made in the blood of Jesus is not just for the Jews, but it's for the heathen. It's for the Gentiles. God said to Abraham, all the nations of the earth will be blessed. Then he said, all the, na- all the families of the earth will be blessed through you, faithful Abraham. Not through Abraham himself, but because Abraham believed God, Isaac, Jacob, Jesus. It was Abraham's seed. And the Bible says, Abraham's blessings are ours. It says, we are the children of Abraham by faith. If we believe in Jesus Christ, we are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. And we have greater promises, more exceeding, abundant, huger, bigger, more abundant, more blessed, more increased in every way, abundant, over and above. And I mean, listen, the, all those, those blessings of the covenant that we read sound like amazing, but our, our blessings are even more amazing than that under the new covenant. Hallelujah. Whatever was under the old covenant, it's not gone. It's not done, done away with. They were not the only ones that God blessed, but God blesses us. He wants to bless us to, to, if it's even possible, to a higher level. Amen. Then even he blessed them. And then in, in, in chapter 30, he said, you'll return and obey God's voice, do his commands, and, I, and God will make you abundantly prosperous in every work of your Work of your hand in the fruit of your body, your cattle, your land for good. The Lord will again delight in prospering you as he took delight in your fathers. But I want to run down here in verse 30 where it talks about, he says in verse 11, this commandment which I command you today is not too difficult for you. Neither is it far off. It's not a secret laid up in heaven that you should say, who shall go up to us to heaven, bring it down. It's not beyond the sea that somebody has to come and bring it to you, but the word is near you, in your mouth and your heart, so that you can do it. See, I've said before you this day, life and death, uh, life and good and death and evil. If you obey the command of the Lord your God, which I command you today, to love him, to walk in his ways, his commandments, his statutes, and his ordinances, you'll live, you'll multiply, and I will bless you in the land which I gave you to possess. And so, it's not far away. Now, that scripture is repeated again in the New Testament in reference to receiving Jesus as Lord and Savior. But when you receive Jesus as Lord and Savior, not only do you receive Him as your Savior and you're gonna, you have that assurance that you can make heaven, but you become a, a recipient of every promise. And God's promises include healing for your body. They include financial prosperity. They include... I mean, can you name a few other things that they include? They include well, it, everything. It starts with salvation, and then peace of mind, and the renewing of your mind, and then your physical body, and then in everything you do, your marriage, your home, your children, your grandchildren, your dog, your, your daily work, your Monday, your Tuesday, your Wednesday, your Thursday, your Friday, your Saturday. Uh, Sunday should be a celebration of the goodness of God from the rising of you out of bed in the morning to the time you put your head on you to go to sleep. The blessing of God. And every time you sow your seed, remember this, you are activating God's promises, His covenant promises in your life. Every time, say every time, I sow my seed in faith and obedience, I'm activating God's covenant promises 
in my life, my family, my home, my business, my ministry, and everything I put my hand to. Amen. So I want the ushers to come and hand out the offering envelopes. Who's believing God for property? Wave your head at me. Who's believing God for a home? Who's believing God for your office complexes or whatever? Who's believing God for transportation? Come on, let's believe for miracles. You've heard the testimonies. So Father, I pray that even as they bring their tithe, their offering to you and their gift to you, they're not given to man. You said that what we do in secret will be reward openly. And I pray that you shall reward them, that even this next week, as we close out today, the month of July, and go into August, that this first week of August shall be a week of blessing every single day, Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday and Saturday, that between now and next Sunday, they will see your hand, that next Sunday we will celebrate what you're doing this week. Let there be miracles of provision. Father, the expected, unexpected, expected, the blessing that comes upon them and overtakes them. So we expect great and mighty things. Thank you that we are not subject to Wall Street. We're not subject to the Dow Jones and Tom Jones and Jack Jones and Indiana Jones or any of their Joneses. We are subject to Jehovah Jireh, our provider, the way maker. Thank you for El Shaddai, the God that is more than enough, the all-sufficient one that your people shall not lack. Even as the Psalm said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not lack. And I thank you, and I speak it upon them even now, and I pray a blessing upon every single man, woman, boy, and girl in this pavilion, and those watching in their homes. Let there be miracles this week. In Jesus' name, we pray, and everyone said, Amen. Now, one thing, how would you react if the thing you were believing God for was met? Now, I know some people say, Pastor, come on, you can't act like that. But in faith, in faith, that means your expector is on this week. That you're going to see Monday miracles, Tuesday miracles, Wednesday miracles, Thursday miracles, Friday miracles. Even though the world is flipping out and the world is collapsing on every side, but God's people will be sustained and the hand of the Lord is upon you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for watching today on YouTube. Please press the subscribe button and also the notification button and like and get the word out so others can watch.